100.3 KLRZ La Rose and 1600 AM KLEB Golden Meadow. <laughs> Cedric Benoit, that's our buddy from up there in uh, Branson. He's living over there now. Originally from somewhere in Southwest Louisiana. Abbeville, yeah, I believe Abbeville. so. Kaplan, I don't know. Somewhere. I think Kaplan, if I'm not mistaken. I tell you what, some of them good musicians from out west come from around Abbeville, Lake Arthur, Kaplan, all in that area, you know? Lock a scene. Must be something in the water over there. Hurricanes Katrina or Rita may have taken personal property, but don't let them take your health. The Louisiana Department of Health and Hospitals and the Louisiana Public Health Institute have created a free automated service with vital health and safety information, like how to recognize safe water and food, how to treat and prevent injuries, immunization, mold precautions, and how to cope with mental health issues. For the Stay Healthy Louisiana Info Line, call toll-free 1-888-419-HEALTHY. That's 1-888-419-4325. This is an important message on infection for people in hurricane areas from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. People in the wake of hurricanes could get gastrointestinal infections with vomiting and diarrhea caused by germs that are common in this country. People usually recover from these by themselves, but some could need medical help. CDC Director Dr. Julie Gerberding. Babies and young children, older people, and especially those with other medical conditions are at greater risk of complications and should get medical advice if they become ill. Fortunately, these infections can be prevented. Don't drink tap water unless local health officials say it's safe. Stay out of the floodwaters and keep your hands clean, especially before eating. If your state and local officials tell you to evacuate, please do so. These simple steps will help you protect your health while hurricane recovery begins. This message is brought to you by the CDC and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Back to the United Radio Broadcasters of New Orleans, a service of the Big 870 WWL, FM 98.5 WYLD, Intercom Communications, and Clear Channel Radio. Welcome back, everyone. Bob Del Giorno, WWL, Intercom Communications, along with Monica Pierre, Clear Channel Radio. I'm with just United pleased Radio. this punch to be here with Monica. Man, I've had so much fun this morning. I know, I know. It's like, oh, I'm so glad we've had this time together. I've had two or three callers uh, off the air saying that we should be the new team. You think so? I think we're a good team. Oh, I didn't hear that. We have a huge challenge, each of us. We have to remake a, a Louisiana in a beautiful, functional state. And, and I think that these opportunities are rare. They are so rare. But they are given to us in this time and in this place. We have each been called. And as I have said quite often, during the... Um, preparations for the storm I had prayed that this cup would pass us by but it did not it did not it is our heritage our inheritance and our mission to make this state the wonderful state that it was and in some ways it can be more wonderful and that is our goal to bring the best out of our people and to create this new environment. And now I would like to give this chair over to the chair, Dr. Norman Francis, to, uh, to lead you in today's meeting and in uh, the work of, the, of weeks and months to come. 
Kelly Blanco as she addressed the Louisiana Recovery Authority, their whole very the very first meeting, and basically just to uh, just to yeah, just very very briefly, here. I was thinking, yeah, not a lot of notes because they have a big charge in front of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Norman Francis with Xavier University, he'll be conducting the meeting. They'll be flying out, surveying areas, coming together, and basically the governor says she's looking forward to what they're going to propose as it relates to critical needs of housing. I mean, to me, that is where we're falling down and how do we get people back in a place to live as well as jobs. She talked about there was a negotiated agreement with the federal government concerning local governments getting some of that assistance, that community disaster relief, and she was disappointed with all of that it happened because Louisiana would have to pay it back, not forgiven like after 9-11 and also hurricanes in Florida. So she looks forward to what they'll tell her this evening when they return from their, their trips and start in the weeks ahead putting together a plan I know she talked about uh, the municipalities, the police, and the oh, fires. Yeah. Did she mention anything about why she's uh, still holding this audit and not paying a lot of these municipalities on the North Shore who can't pay their employees? That did not come I didn't hear you mention anything about that. That is a big concern yeah. because they're laying off people in these different municipalities. Monica Pierre, Q93 Clear Channel Radio, along with Bob Diljourno, WWL, yeah. the Big 870. And, and you, you had a very pressing question for the governor. Oh, well, she did not address in her remarks. Well, yeah, and let's get an update. Uh, a, a number of municipalities, mostly on the oh. North Shore, uh, have been uh, trying to get this money from FEMA, uh, from Homeland Security, that has been held up with audits uh, in Baton Rouge to pay their firefighters and, and their police. And Dave Cohen's got an update on that and can answer some questions. Yeah. Hey, Dave, are you with us this morning? Dave Cohen, News Director, WWL. Dave? Oh, oh, I gotta do it. Okay. Oh, I gotta work it. Okay, Dave. Dave. Yeah, you Dave. gotta push my button. Uh, there you go. I'm yeah, gonna push you your Dave. button, brother. Don't you worry. <laughs> What's the latest on this? Good Sunday, morning. Dave? In fact, Bob, not a single municipality in the state is receiving its FEMA money the way it should. Well, um, what's the, the North Shore is just why? one example of the bigger problem. Why? why? Well, there's a couple of things going on. One, it's the general red tape of the federal government. But I attended a hearing yesterday of a legislative subcommittee. It was a joint committee of some House and some um, Senate lawmakers. And one of the things that they've identified is one municipality that actually did get some money early in the game was Kenner. They got $5 million the first week after the storm. And they started looking at, well, why did Kenner get the money then? It hasn't gotten any since. Mm -hmm. And what they found out was shortly after the storm, the state's legislative auditor made a decision that all requests for federal money would be audited before they were funded. It would have been different if Bobby Jindal was elected? Oh, I knew he was clearly four or five steps ahead of her for intelligence, mm -hmm. and I just had a little respect for her. For I, I thought she worked hard for the state, and and I figured uh, maybe we should give a woman a chance, you know, in politics. Well, they didn't want to give a brown government. person a chance. But clearly, it was a bad choice. Yeah, yeah. we got to really get rid of all this uh, this this image that we've we've clung to and we've been proud of that all we glory in the things we should be ashamed of. We've been humbled. We've been chastised. There needs to be response. There needs to be a response. God is looking for a response from our leaders. That response needs to be repentance, call for prayer meetings, uh, an acknowledgement of, uh, of God, uh, uh, basing decisions upon morality, whether we will offend God. Not getting on the news and getting mad and cursing God out. Not going to broken cisterns like gambling and letting gambling, what, increase the sin and the perversion and the drunkenness and the wickedness? That's it. All that leadership that wants us to take us back to what we were before, they don't even recognize that well, that wasn't working. We were imploding. We were not, it wasn't working before. It ain't gonna work now. We got a, just a great opportunity to change the whole image of our city.